Java has several different types of operators. Some examples would be arithmetic, like add, subtract, multiply, divide, or logical, like and, or, not, or exclusive, or. But in this video, I want to focus specifically on relational operators. And what relational operators do is they perform a test with two different operands or two different values. If you've taken any kind of math class, you've probably run into these. And I have a column here that's designated math. And so the relational operators for math are greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, equal to, or not equal to. Now some of the relational operators are coded exactly the same way they would be written in math, the greater than and the less than. But all the other relational operators, there are slight variations. So you can see the greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Well, there's no greater than with an underline underneath it, meaning equals, on a keyboard. And therefore, Java uses two symbols, the greater than and equal to, or the less than and equal to symbol, meaning the exact same thing. The not equals, again, there is no equal sign with a line through it on the keyboard. Therefore, it uses two symbols, the exclamation point and the equal symbol, to mean not equal to. And then the last, probably most confusing or most often mistaken, is the equal sign versus the double equal sign. And the double equal sign means equal, and we're going to show you the difference in the next slide. In this slide, what I have before you is not a relational operator. It is the assignment operator. And the assignment operator assigns the value on the right to the operand on the left. And so we're taking that 9 and assigning it to x. There is no test there. As I said with the definition of a relational operator, a relational operator is going to perform a test. And what test is it performing? Well, it's trying to see, are these values equal to one another? So is 9 equal to 9? Well, that would be true. So therefore, it would output or be assigned as true. The next example, we have 5 equal to 9 with the relational operator. And this, of course, would be false. So it would either assign or output or whatever you're going to do with this, false. But hopefully you can see the difference between the two. The assignment operator is going to take what's on the right and move it into the left. There's no kind of test going on. Whereas the relational operator is performing a test between the two values to see, hey, are these two equal? That's why you must use a double equal sign as opposed to the single equal sign when using the relational operator. So in this slide, I've shown you some relational operators in use. And like I said, they're always going to perform a test. And so they're going to be testing for true or false. And so we can see that 5 is not greater than 9. Therefore, it would return false. 9 is greater than or equal to 9, so that would return true. 5 is less than 9, so that would return true. 5 is less than or equal to 9, that would be true. 5 is equal to 9 is false, and then 5 is not equal to 9, well that is true. So we see how relational operators can be used. And again, it's important to note that they will always evaluate to true or false. So what is a relational operator? It's an operator that tests the relationship between two operands. So it's trying to say, hey, what is the relationship between the right and the left? Greater than, less than, less than or equal to, etc. And that test is always going to result in true or false. Examples of relational operators are the ones that I gave you. And the six of them are less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal to, and not equal to. And the most common mistake with relational operators is to use one equal sign instead of two equal signs. If you use the one equal sign, you're using the assignment operator as opposed to the relational operator. Relational operators are important to the Java language in that they're going to perform tests whether things are true or, or false. And as we move forward, we're going to see that many statements and structures use them in order to figure out whether they should do something or not. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like this video, please do click the like button below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.